Ni ni kwadi. All right. So guys, we begin course in uh, management. Me dia phut tai mai mai tham dia. Kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We begin the course in management and today we begin to cover as much as we can from chapter 1, maybe all of it. Chapter 1 in management, in the introduction of principle to management is simply go well, guys. Hello. Okay. All right, let's get these kids. Is it? Can I go back? No, no, no. Here. Yeah. All right, guys. Everybody. All right, please. So, managers in management, chapter one. And first of all, what we're trying to do today is fairly straightforward. Tell who managers. Uh, next part is define management. So, what is management? After we define management, we want to describe what managers do. We also say that so who the managers are, what is management. Number three, describe what managers do. The next important part for today is explain why it is important to study management and the last piece is some of the factors that are changing management last time i explained that one of the major factors is globalization globalization is very important all right we begin with part one Uh, if you guys should buy the textbook, the textbook is this little thing, Fundamentals of Management by Stephen Robbins, okay? And you should buy the textbook so you can actually follow from the textbook too. So number one, tell who the managers are and where they work. And managers work in an organization organization is a collection of people who work together for a common goal they try to accomplish the same objectives and the primary objective usually for any business is profit managers work in organizations the organization's usual goal is profit sometimes for a government organization it will not be profit for a government organization like police it will be low crime but they all work together all right and organizations have certain characteristics so every organization has specific goals for this university which is a non-profit university the goal is education raise the young generation and allow them to have good careers to build and grow your own country and your own economy and make good lives for themselves for yourselves okay For the police, it's low crime, and for all other businesses, it's simply, simply profit. So the next characteristic is that all organizations are built of people. That's natural. Okay, this is not a zoo with animals. So police department has people, university has people, any business has people, and finally. It has a structure. Structure means there is someone at the top, then there are people beneath it, and beneath there are people, and there are different, we call levels, different levels of organization. So, this is an organization. Hello, girls. Class begin, okay? Next time you're going to be out, okay? So, 
organizations have structure and it's called level of structure. And is it coming in a minute? You're gonna have a top level of structure, middle level of structure, a low, lower level of uh, structure. All right, this is a simple picture for kids. And the picture is, you see the goals, okay? You have certain goals, you have certain people, and this is what a structure looks like. Of course, let me show you here. Here, you're gonna have maybe three more. Here, you're gonna have three more. Here, you're gonna have five more, okay? And the structure is like a tree, okay? For a big organization, it may have six or seven levels of structure. In other words, they're going to be mini boss, they're going to be bigger boss, they're going to be mega boss, and they're going to be the top boss, okay? I mean, you're going to be, have a lot of level of management. All right, so every organization has two types of employees. The first one is non-managerial, and here it is, non-managerial. Non-managerial employees are not responsible for anybody else. They are responsible for their own work. Yesterday I gave you as an example that I am a non-managerial employee. This means I'm at the lower level in academia. I'm not responsible for any other professor. I'm responsible only for my own work, okay? So, I'm not a manager. Managing basically means you run other people. And that's the characteristic of manager. These are individuals or people who direct the activities or the work of others. Who direct the work of others. So, if somebody is responsible for other people, he is a manager. If he is not responsible, he is not a manager. And that's the basic difficult difference. Are you responsible for other people or not responsible? Me, as a faculty, as a professor, I'm not responsible for other people's work. Now, I am responsible for you, okay? But you're not working here. You are customers here. Okay, and remember what the primary characteristic of a customer is? The primary characteristic of a customer is someone who is paying for a good or for service. So, you're paying tuition and you expect for that tuition to get a, in this case, service. And the service is education. And we're, as you see, using a lot of technology camera, PowerPoint, computers, uh, you've all got iPads to improve the productivity of my work as a teacher, as a job, and for you as... Now, this technology is no different than you using a motorcycle to go from here to there. It takes two minutes with a motorcycle instead of a 10-minute walk. Next one. Next one is management levels. So, management has a structure. And structure has level. And this is just one example. Example of top managers. And top managers represent the top level. Then you have middle management. Middle management is the middle layer or the middle level. And then you have the bottom managers. And bottom managers are called first line managers. First line manager is a manager who works only with non managerial employees, who is actually responsible non managerial employees. Now, in major corporations in the United States, you may have six or seven or eight levels six, seven, or eight levels because the organization is big. The organization may have 100,000 people. And in the 100,000 people organization, it will 
have seven, eight, or nine levels of management. When I worked in the year of 2000 to 2003 in a big American corporation, it was SBC uh, Communications, I had a tiny little boss. My tiny boss had a little bigger boss. This is within the sales department. I was in sales operations. So my little boss had a little bigger boss. And then we had the big manager of sales and sales operation. Well, she had a manager of the software division. And the manager of the software division had the manager of the whole corporation. So you have five levels of employees or four levels of management built on top of each other. Okay? We call this structure. Okay, so what do managers do? What's their job? Okay, and it depends on their position. So for, we say, the top management, which we call big boss, will have very, very, very different responsibilities than the little manager. For example, the president of the university, well, completely different, completely different job than here the department chair. The president of the university will think, should we buy more land for the university? Should we build a brand new department? Should we build a brand new building? In other words, he will be focused on the big picture. He will be focused on what we'll discuss in chapter four, strategy okay strategy is about the most important things related to the corporation okay this is the same as the direction of in our case the university for example when I was working in another country the president of the university said oh we want to have the English speaking program and employees meaning other university professors and management didn't care but the big boss said it's important for us we are an Asian economy we are an advanced developed economy we have to have an English program the English program is important for us and whether middle management or wall management like it or don't like it He's the boss, he decides, he tells them, if somebody doesn't like it, we can go out, okay, find another job at another university. What about middle management? Middle management is usually coordination. Middle management is trying to communicate with top management and at the same time with low level management. So what they do is coordinate activities between the top management and the low level management and they say manage the activities of other lower management. But this is not exact, it's not just managing the lower, it's coordinating between the top and the bottom. In other words, if the president says we need an English program, then these guys will hire new professors with English skills and so on. So they'll try to see that what the big boss wants, what top management wants, it gets eventually done. And finally, first line managers simply direct non-managerial employees. In other words, for example, the department chair will be managing me. Now, the department chair will have a boss who's going to be the dean, okay, the dean of the school, in this case of the faculty, the faculty of hospitality and tourism, okay. So this is what basically these guys do. Oh, these guys also have titles, okay. Remember for the university we said that the university was a, has a president but sometimes going to be chief. 
executive officer. Sometimes it's going to be a vice president, okay? It's going to be vice president in finance. They like to call themselves VP. VP meaning vice president, okay? Well, what about the middle manager? It's going to be district manager, division manager. Sometimes it could be called regional manager, okay? They all like to call themselves some sort of a manager. And finally, it's just going to be supervisor, team leader, okay? All right. Section number two. So we finished section number one. Section number two is define management. To define means, what does it mean? What is management? Okay, what's the subject of management? And we move on. Oh. Management is a process. Take a look how it's italicized. It's a process, okay? So it's not a one thing, it's a process. So it's a number of different steps of getting things done effectively and efficiently. So you gotta do it effectively, you got to do it efficiently, and I will be explaining now what is effectiveness and what is efficient. There's a big difference between these two. In English, they sound the same. They're very different. To be effective means to accomplish the goal, achieve the goal, mean doing the right things, okay? So, you want to get the job done. Getting the job done. That's what effective means. It means getting the job done, accomplishing the task. For effectiveness, my job is to teach you elementary management or principles of management. My job is to teach you and for you to learn and understand basic management, but I also have another goal, another objective. And the other objective is to teach you to communicate in English easily, and part of the exams will be open questions where you actually have to write sentences in English. Sentences have to be fairly good and of substance, okay? So, I actually have two jobs. One is teach you general English and the language skills where you can also communicate and write in English. And the other one is management. So that's effectiveness. Efficiency is associated with getting things done quickly, getting them done with little resources. So efficiency is about the ratio between input and output. Output is the effectiveness. Effectiveness, what's the output? How much you learn. But efficiency is about, was I able to teach you in two weeks, or in five weeks, or in 20 weeks, okay? So efficiency is how much work you do to get there, okay? So, example of efficiency is, you want to go from here to 7-Eleven, which is about how far? Five minutes away? Two minutes away? Ah, it depends. It is two minutes away if you go with a motorbike, okay? But if you walk, it's five or eight minutes, okay? So the goal is you get to 7-Eleven and buy yourself lunch, okay? But it is less efficient to walk because it takes seven minutes. It is more efficient to go on the bike because it takes one minute, okay? So, efficiency, you still go 7-Eleven. You still go and eat, okay? But with a motorcycle, it is more efficient, okay? So that's one type of more efficient. Another type of more efficient is what we sometimes do with PowerPoint. Today, you do not need to print PowerPoint. Why? Because you already have it in electronic form, okay? 
you already have it on your LMS system. The LMS system is actually known as Moodle originally. You can download. In other words, electronic form is more efficient than the paper form. Okay? Paper takes paper, right? Electronic takes only electricity. All right. So, efficiency is associated with resource usage. So, in efficiency, you use little resources and get a lot of outputs, okay? In our case, the resource of going to 7-Eleven was time. More efficient means you take one minute with a motor, one minute with a motorcycle. It takes seven minutes walk, okay? Well, if you want to be more effective, it's going to take more resources. So, if we want to teach everyone excellent English here or excellent management, it's going to take more time more exams, more resources. So, we say there is a trade-off between efficiency and effectiveness. If you want to be very efficient, usually you're not very effective. Okay? If you want to be very, very effective, you're not usually efficient. So, if you want to achieve a lot of goal, big goal, you need a lot of resources and it makes it inefficient okay and the opposite is true and that's why you have these here you know resource usage goes down and respectively goal attainment all right yeah when they say resource usage or efficiency efficiency is associated with waste here's an, another good example of efficiency Efficiency is about education. Now, we are having here, let's say, 45 students. But the whole class is 55 students. So, for example, maybe 10 students are not attending the class, okay? One way to achieve the education for all 55 is we have a separate class for two, and a half, for two hours, okay? And teach those 10 people, okay? So that's one way to do it. But there's another way. And the other way is called a camera. We record it on the camera, we put it on YouTube, and then they can watch it later at their own time. This makes it more efficient. Camera is same as motorcycle. It saves time, okay? Someone could be sick, someone can have other problems. They can use the camera for better efficiency. Okay. So, number three, section number three. What do managers do? What is it they do? All right, oh, we got different views. We got different philosophies. So, you have a different, it's called approaches. There is what's called the functions approach or the functional approach approach. And the functions approach was proposed by some French industrialists, okay, that managers perform certain activities. So, according to the function, functions approach, it depends on which or which are the activities that managers do. And these are four, which we'll see now in a minute, which you'll remember which is, as I took, uh, mentioned to you yesterday, something like a question on the quiz. The question on the quiz is, which are the major functions in the functions approach, okay? And here is the answer. The answer is the four major or the four primary management functions are planning, Organizing, leading, and controlling. These are the four primary functions. Our whole textbook, the whole textbook, and our course is organized according to the functions approach. Now, if you 
by chance happen to open the syllabus or you happen to open the uh, textbook, you will see that section one, you can try to zoom in here, yeah? Section one is the introduction and section two is planning. Section three is, does it work? Organizing. Section four is leading. And section five is controlling, right? Camera is more interesting, right? Yeah. Okay, you got it back? Yeah. All right. Now you can zoom out, right? Good. So, what we're doing is we organize this whole course, the subject, the way we study. All right, All right please. Let, let's make it, uh, is this, where's to this the air conditioning lower a little bit? Okay. All right, so we organize the whole course entirely based on the four primary functions, the four major functions. And over the next 10 or 11 weeks, we're going to spend maybe two weeks here, okay, or three weeks here. Maybe two or three weeks here, two or three weeks here in two weeks here and remember we got about two weeks of introduction in introduction we got three chapters to cover okay so probably for the introduction we spend about two weeks and for each of these we spend about two weeks okay and we're gonna have some exams and other things right so planning what is planning and planning is you want to find out what's the goal, what's the purpose, what's the objective. But you want to be a little bit more specific. You can't just say, educate kids. Well, you want to say something like, we want to educate 3,000 children and give them or graduate them with a bachelor's degree. Okay, that's more specific goal. Then you also say, we also want to have 500 master's students. And now I understand a major goal. Hello, I'm still here. If you have questions, you ask me later or ask me, okay? I mean, I'm your main consultant here, okay? And the university has a new goal or a new purpose of opening and developing and growing a PhD program, a doctoral program, okay? So they want to say, we want to have a PhD in five majors, in five major fields. So every organization will have a specific purpose. And the purpose here, as I said, is education okay the purpose for a typical hotel is profit but you want to say we want to make a one million profit or two million profit okay uh, sometimes part of the planning is we're going to open a new campus now you got to understand this university here has five different branches and the very president of the university say oh our major goal is to open campus number six, okay? And campus number six is part of the strategy, of the big picture, okay? Next, number two is organizing, okay? Well, in this university, the organization first is done in five different campuses, five different locations, okay? Here, in Phuket, right? The, we, you have how many faculties? We got a faculty of international studies, right? You got a faculty of hospitality and tourism. You're all students of, uh, right? You got a faculty of engineering, and maybe two or three more faculties, okay? So, you got a total of, in this university structure, Structure is the same as organization. So an organization means some structure. So the structure here is into 
faculties, okay? So that's what the organization. Oh, and there it is. See the keyword in organizing? The keyword is structuring, okay? So organization has arrangement into different structure. The structure here is called in this university faculty. In a corporation, the structure may be called division, okay? So a structure will have a specific name, okay? In a typical university, it, the main structure is called the school, the business school, the law school, medical school. And then within business school, we're going to have finance department. Management department, marketing department, economics department. So you will have different departments. Okay. The next third function is leading. Leading is the same as directing. For example, the department manager tells me, you teach management and you teach accounting. What am I supposed to say? supposed to say yes boss right and or okay how many groups she says two groups in management one group in accounting I say okay boss where's the classroom okay which is the textbook okay so leading means manager managing other people could be other managers or could be first level employees and it is associated with directing, directing. So basically, department manager says, leading, you teach management, you teach accounting, you teach finance. So giving us different type of work and part of leading is also keeping people responsible. And keeping people responsible is controlling. So. You watch them. Do I come on time? Do we actually do work? Do I actually teach you? Do I give you good exams? So, they actually see what we do. Well, can they see what we're doing here in class? Can the boss see what we're doing? Well, two ways to see. One is asking you, hey, is he actually teaching you? Are you really learning something? That's one way. But there is another way. And it's the camera. They can actually see that I'm teaching you. They can actually see I'm doing. So, next one is comparing. There are three professors in management. Let's see what is this guy teaching, what is that guy teaching, okay? And also correcting. Correcting means maybe professor leaving students 10 minutes early, okay? And say, oh no, you got to keep them till the last minute. Or maybe a professor comes 10 minutes late to class and says, oh, no, no, you got to come back on time. Or correcting means you cannot give them five quizzes. Five quizzes, way too much, right? Or maybe they say the opposite. No, you got to have at least three quizzes, okay? So correcting is seeing something that is not right and tell them, oh, you got to fix this and you got to do it right. Okay, so these are the four major management functions. They will be most likely on the first quiz, okay, and you have to explain a little bit to about one or some of them. Okay, now there is a different type of approach. And a different type of approach explaining what managers do is according to their roles. So, one strategy is you look at the functions, and the functions are four. But a completely different approach is the approach of management roles. Yeah, you can also sometimes zoom in a little bit, right? You can zoom in a little bit so they can see because these are very tiny. Try to zoom in the first here as I talk, and then maybe zoom in later here. So, the first one is called interpersonal roles and number one you see you have a number of like 10 roles over here the first one is called figurehead 
And figurehead means he's the big boss. He tells what other people do. He's everybody's looking up to him. He provides example with his behavior, with his clothes, okay, with his attitude. So in a sense, in a sense, but a little bit different, he's a leader. And leader is number two, okay? Figurehead will be when they need someone to show up on TV and say, oh, our university is great, we're doing this and that. The figurehead is the guy who's gonna show up on TV. He's gonna smile and he's gonna say, our university is great. We are number one in Southern Thailand, right? So he's gonna be the one. He's gonna present or represent the university in media. He's gonna represent the university in the newspapers. When there is a big event, he's going to be representing the university. And final, within the interpersonal role, he will, managers will function as a liaison. Liaison is a nasty French word which means connection, connection. So, I gave you the example of a liaison of middle management. Middle management provides connection between top management and lower level management. Sometimes for lower level management they call it bottom management. Yeah, bottom doesn't sound good because bottom, you don't want to be at the bottom, right? So they don't say bottom management, they say first line management, okay? First line management sounds better, sounds nice. But it's bottom management, okay? If you got a top management, you got a bottom management. And liaison will be middle management providing connection between the top management and the first line management. A completely different role. So you see we've got three groups of roles. Role number one is interpersonal with these three. The second is informational. And the informational group has a monitor role. Monitor role will be basically the department manager, manager department chair, looking at me and saying, oh, are you going to class? Are these kids listening? Are they studying? How are they doing? Basically, to monitor means to watch the others, the lower level people do their work. You just watch them and see if everything is okay. Part of monitoring is to see if things get done, if work gets done. And if it doesn't, we said later on there is correction, okay, control. After monitoring, monitoring, there is dissemination. Dissemination is dissemination of information. Dissemination means to give news, to spread the news. So I get from my boss every couple of days news. Well, we gotta do this, this, and this. Uh, you gotta give them so many exams. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. You cannot do this, you cannot do that. Or there will be a holiday on whichever day, okay? There will be no plans, okay? Or part of the dissemination is there will be on this week, on week, let's say number eight, there will be midterm. And on the midterm, your exam will be with this group of management on whichever date, okay? An hour. So they tell us certain things that are happening as part of the organization, okay? So, they inform us. It's about information. And finally, they act, meaning the manager acts as a spokesperson, okay? So, a spokesperson means someone from the department will come along and say, oh, based on our department, we have so many faculties and whatever it is. So, they will be representing the Department, okay? Department is, let's say, eight people. Well, who's going to talk about the department? Well, it's going to be the department chair. In other words, the manager will be the spokesperson who represents 
that business unit. We say business unit is part of the organization. And finally, you got decisional roles. And decisional role is that of an entrepreneur. Ah. You're familiar with this word? Entrepreneur means someone who tries to do new things and those new things to accomplish maybe new goals or to do something different or to do something differently and better. Now I'm acting as an entrepreneur by introducing a camera to the class, okay? It's, have you had other professors who use camera and record everything? No, well, sometimes managers will act as entrepreneurs. Will they say, hey, we can develop a, this new product. Or the department chair will say, oh, we can have a brand new course. Course in, I don't know, Italian cooking or Mexican kitchen or Mexican, we say, cuisine, right? Or, you know, they can have some idea about introducing a new product or a new service or a new way of doing it. The next one is actually very important. Disturbance handler. This is the same as problem. If there is a problem, it's the manager's job to fix it. For example, if there is a problem in class, okay, or you're not happy about something, you go to the manager and say, oh, I'm not happy for this professor. He's not teaching us. Or he's bad to us, okay? He's the Mr. Bad Guy, right? So, basically, the major function of a manager is to coordinate, and if there are problems, to fix problems. These problems they like to call disturbances. A disturbance will be, for example, we, you know where we have offices, all professors, and there are eight professors of us in the office. Let's say four on the left and four on the right, okay? And one of the professors turning up his music, okay? And say, well, but I work here. I'm trying to get work done, okay? He says, I don't care, okay? Well, what do I do? I go and beat him up, a little Thai kickboxing. Is this how it works here? You guys understand? Another professor having his music up, right, loud. I can't work. Well, what do I do? Well, I can't go and beat him up, okay? I go to his manager and say, look, your employee is disturbing us with his music. He is too much of a trouble. I come here to work. Could you please tell him to lower his music or to stop his music, okay? So you don't just go and kick him in the face, right? Okay, the next important piece is resource allocator. Resource allocator, well, manager will decide you get 30,000, you get 50,000, you get 70,000, you get 100,000. That's one way to allocate the resources. Another way to allocate the resources, you have management, you're going to teach in 4504, whatever the classroom is. They're going to tell us, you teach in this classroom, you teach in that classroom. So that's a resource. Another type of a resource allocation is time. You say, you teach 8.30 in the morning till 10.30 in the morning, okay? That's another type of a resource. And finally, another type of, a, of, of, of an allocation is you teach accounting, you teach finance, you teach management, okay? So basically, they try to distribute the work and they try to distribute the resources. Part of a resource allocation is my manager comes when I arrive three weeks ago and says, this is your office. And this is your key, okay? So office is a resource for us, okay? And the last, number 10, is negotiator. Negotiator is, I like to teach finance, and he like to teach finance, and we're in an argument, okay? Well, this is where the manager comes and says, okay, if you want to teach this, you got to give him that, or, you know, whatever the problem is. 
For example, you got, let's say, 7-Eleven. Uh, 7-Eleven works 24 hours, okay? And there's a night shift, and there's a day shift. And the two employees arguing, one says, oh, I want to work in the day. The other one says, I also want to work in the day, okay? So if there is a problem, they say, okay, you work this week during the day, and you work next week during the day. So they try to negotiate. They say, well, but one week not enough, okay? And they say, okay, in June, you work during the day. In July, you work during the night, okay? So they try to work with different employees and try to negotiate if there are problems. So these are the primary roles that managers have. You guys want a little break, like a five, 10 minute break? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see, there's a question there and we take a break. And what? Okay, figurehead, and which is the other one? Spokesperson. Oh, spokesperson. Oh, they're, unfortunately, they're very similar. Spokesperson is someone who represents the ideas of the department or the business school, and he speaks for the department. For example, you got a business school and there's going to be the chair of finance. He speaks for finance. They have a chair of management. He speaks for management. Chair of economics, speaking for economics. Chair of accounting, speaking for accounting. And chair of marketing, speaking for marketing. So, when there is a school meeting, each manager will be speaking for his little department, okay? So, he will be representing his particular unit. All right, let's take a five, seven minute break and then we continue. Pause.